Hello and welcome. I'm glad you're here. This is Jennifer. Sorry it's been a while since I've done a video. I took a little adventure with my daughter. We went traveling for a week and it was magical and much needed escape. But I had a video that I started filming before I left and I just finished so I could share it with you today. Now this is a video taking a product that I've had for ages and bringing it back to life. I get a lot of requests for using old products. So that's what led to this. This product allows you to create incredible metallic looking backgrounds, a really unique look. Now, I remember teaching with these when I used to teach classes at our local stamp store, maybe 15 years ago. I found them in my uh, stash and they still work great, but I did purchase new ones to use in this video today just so I could be sure the colors haven't changed over the years and they haven't. It's still a tried and true product that I loved back in the day and I'm so glad to play with again. I know a lot of stampers or card makers from long ago will likely have this in their stash. If not, the products are still available. These are metallic rub-ons, and there are four different sets available with different colors. Now, these can be used in a million different ways. Today, I'm just focusing on one application, and I'll do more videos in the future showing other ways to use them. These are great for adding highlights or metallic accents to your projects. It is easy to apply. It can be used on regular cardstock, glossy cardstock, vellum. You can use it on wood and so much more. Now, as I mentioned, there are four color sets available. I have put the numbers of the sets on the bottom of the screen so you know which is which. Sets one, two, and three all give a metallic shine. Set number four gives more of a luster shine and they're all beautiful. Now you don't need them all. Of course, there are different colors in each and you'll see me use them all today. If you're looking for a good place to start, I like number two over on the left because it has gold, bronze, like a shimmery black, a dark gray. And I also like number one because it has that bright silver in the middle that just gives a beautiful shine. These look like they don't have much product in them, but I assure you, little goes a long way with these and they last a very long time. As I mentioned, the ones I've had in my stash forever are still good to go, and there's a lot of product in them. You don't use much when you apply these, and in fact, you don't need any tools because they come built in. You use your finger to apply these. All you do is press your finger into the color and then rub it onto your project. Now, the texture of this is kind of like a lipstick or a chapstick. That's how it goes on. It wipes off your finger pretty easily. I just keep a wet cloth nearby to wipe my finger off before I go to a new color. So no special tools needed to use these. Now, as I mentioned, there are a load of techniques you can do. What I'm showing here, just applying it to paper, is like the least interesting of all of them. I just wanted to show you the colors. They're easy to blend. I will be demonstrating using these over heat embossing today and also with a little bit of masking. But these are excellent for embossing folders, using on die cuts and much more and I'll show that in future videos. Here you can see how it just leaves this metallic sheen to your project. Really beautiful and it's a great way to get a completely different look from your embossed backgrounds. I'm also using these on cardstock today but remember you can use them on other surfaces too. You can use these on light colors or dark colors. I really like the look on dark colors the most, especially with te today's technique. So you'll notice that I start with dark cardstock in each of the cases. Okay, let's dive into this and show you how easy these are to create really unique backgrounds. Now for this card, I'm using some new products from Gina K Designs. These came out a few weeks ago. This is their Let's Celebrate kit. I always like Gina's kits because there's a lot packed into it that can be used over and over. This has two large six by eight stamp sets, coordinating dies, a layered happy birthday die set, a blending brush, some cardstock, and connect adhesive, all of which are favorites of mine. So these are tools that can be used over and over again. I will be using both of the stamp sets today along with the birthday layering die. I'm using this set first. This is one of the six by eight sets in the kit. I like how detailed and intricate these images are. It's perfect for today's technique, but you could use absolutely any stamped image for what we're doing today. This set does also include the coordinating dies for the smaller images. 
I'll be using my Misty stamping tool and I have a piece of Gina K Tropical Teal cardstock. It's a beautiful color. I'm also using my Inkblot Shop A2 alignment guides. If you don't have an alignment guide like this, I recommend checking them out. This one has little engraved lines. It's nice, it's easy to clean off. I like to use these to make sure that I get my stamp straight and centered. You just lay it over your cardstock, you can see through it, use the guidelines to make sure it's centered and straight, close the door on your Misty, grab the stamp, and you're done. It's really helpful. I like tools like this that are inexpensive and make my crafting faster and keeps me from making many mistakes. So I used my anti-static powder tool and now I'm stamping this image with Versamark ink. I then will add any kind of clear embossing powder and heat set it. This will give it a very beautiful intricate image and it'll just look a little bit darker and shinier than the color cardstock I used. Now here's a tip that I, I recommend doing whenever you really want an image to stand out and for the technique we're doing today. I'm double embossing. So I put the cardstock back into the Misty and stamped with Versamark ink right on top of the clear embossing we did. And now I'm adding another layer of clear, clear embossing powder and heat setting it. And look how this gives more of a domed and shiny effect than just one layer. It's beautiful and it doesn't take that much time to do the two layers. If you've never tried doing a double layer of embossing powder, I highly recommend it. Now I've put the cardstock back into the same position but rotated it so that I can clear heat emboss on the other half of the cardstock piece. Now I'm leaving a big gap there in the center for my card design, but you can put them closer together if you just want to put a small sentiment in the center. I again double clear heat emboss this image. By the way, later in this video, I'll show you comparison of this technique with two layers of clear embossing versus one layer of clear embossing. I'll give you a close up comparison and you'll see the big difference it has to offer. Okay, once I'm done, I can wipe off the excess uh, anti-static embossing powder and now we can do the technique. When we add the metallic rub-ons over this background, we get this beautiful metallic shine. And even better, it's fast and easy to do. All you need to do is press your finger into the metallic rub-on, kind of squish it around in there, and then apply it generously over your heat embossed image or over cardstock or whatever you want to use. Now, you don't want to be dainty here. You want to really work that product into the nooks and crannies of the heat embossing. And I try to apply as much as I can. And you'll see a little goes a long way. I barely put a dent into the amount of product in the set. Now I am applying multiple colors just for kind of a blended look, but you do not need to take the effort of blending the colors yourself. When we buff this, it will end up being uh, blended on its own. So I put down like a bronze, a dark gray, and now this bright silver, which I think is beautiful. And then I'll put a little blue on the edge. If you apply some colors, decide you don't like them, you can always do other colors on top of it. This is a very forgiving technique and you can layer as much as you want. You'll notice that I'm leaving that center section uh, just as is because I plan to cover that up later. So once I have as much product on as I want, I'll just take a dry paper towel and just buff the entire piece. This will remove the metallic rub on from the clear embossed images. It kind of resists it, allowing it to stand out even more and then have a metallic sheen around it. It gives this beautiful kind of um, engraved metallic look. It's just gorgeous in real life. Now I decided I wanted a little more of the bronze color there towards the center. So I just added some more and then I will buff it once again with the dry paper towel. In that middle area, you can see what the original color of cardstock was and how we've completely changed the look of it. Now I did decide to trim this to be a little more narrow for my card design and I did decide to add some of the metallic rub on to that center section. So now the entire piece will have metallic rub on over it. When I'm done, I just buff off all of the excess and we're good to go. Now I did decide to use metallic rub-ons on another piece. I white heat embossed this time a Hello Friend sentiment from the same stamp set and I die cut it from a circle die, which I'll show you later on. Now I am applying metallic rub-ons over this. This time I used white embossing powder so that it would stand out a bit more and I'm simply applying the metallic rub-ons over it so that this circle piece would match my background. So you can see now I have this beautiful kind of um, metallic sheen cardstock that I created myself. Now here's the thing, 
You can, if you want to, spray these with a fixative if you're concerned about the metallic rub-ons coming off, but I'll be honest, I usually don't. I did in this case for the video, but in the past when I've used these products, I just buff off the excess and I don't worry about it. But know that you can use a fixative spray and I link to the one that I used below in my description. Okay, let's turn this into a card. I have trimmed this piece down to be about five and a half by three and a half inches, and I matted it with a piece of the same tropical teal cardstock. So a little bit peaks out the outside sides. I just like that pop of the original color. And I'm adding it to a top folding four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. I then used the Gina K Master Layouts die set. I love these die sets. I think they're really brilliant because they have a lot to offer and they're sized just right for cards and offer layering dies. Now there are two dies in there, the big rectangle ones that aren't part of the set. Somehow it ended up in here for the video, but I'll have a link below so you can see what does belong in that set. So I use the circle die from that to create this layered centerpiece and also to create that white label piece that'll get glued right to the center. I decided to wrap some gold metallic thread around that white label piece just to add a little bit of shine and really pull out that metallic look in the background. So I just taped it to the back of the label piece, wrapped this, the gold thread around it, and taped the other end to the back, and we'll glue that right in the center of our card. Now I have a different gold thread here because I can't find my Altenew metallic thread. If you're looking for a good metallic thread, Altenew has a set of three. It's like a silver, gold, and a champagne color. That would be perfect for this situation. I also cut two more pieces of the gold thread and I created bows from those pieces, pretty big size bows. And I'll glue these behind the hello friend circle so that the loops and the ends kind of stick out. I thought this would really add a little bit of interest to this very structured card. I put a little pixie glue dot right at the center and I'm just pressing my two bows into it. And then over this, I will glue that hello circle. Now you know me, I like to add gems and pearls to my projects. In this case, I decided to add some teal pearls from Trinity Stamps into the pattern on our background. I really feel like the shine of these pulls out that metallic shine that we added to the background. It, this is one of those techniques that unfortunately is hard to capture in video and in photos, but in real life that shine is just really soft and beautiful and gives a faux uh, metal look to your background. This is a fast technique that gives really cool results. You could do a clear heat embossed background stamp onto colored cardstock, use the metallic rub-ons, add a sentiment, and you're good to go. You'll see that several of the cards I do in this video are very quick to make. I love how we have that raised embossing because we did two layers of the clear embossing. The clear embossing traps that teal color underneath and then by applying the metallic rub-ons on top, you get that metallic sheen around it. And for a complete look, I used a Gina K Tropical Teal Envelope to match the card. Okay, let's do another example. This one is really quick to do and shows how you can use a really beautiful, intricate focal point image for the technique. This is the Gina K Spread Your Wings stamp set, beautiful set, and that large image would be wonderful to watercolor or color with Copic markers or pencils. I wanted to show you that you could take this image and give it a completely different look using a technique like this one. So once again, I will start by clear heat embossing this image on a dark color of cardstock. Now you can use lighter cardstocks for this. However, your images won't stand out against the metallic background as much. When you heat emboss with clear powder on a dark cardstock, it gets darker in that area, right? So your heat embossed image is dark. And then when you put the metallic rub-ons on it, that dark heat embossed image will stand out more. If you're using a light cardstock to start out with, your heat embossed image will look light. And then when you put the metallic rub-ons on it, it won't stand out as much. Another thing you could do is use any color cardstock you want and use a colored embossing powder. That's another option, but I don't keep a lot of colored embossing powders on hand. I would much rather use ink and a clear embossing powder to get that look. And that's what we did today.
Okay, now I also thought I would add little dots along the background just for a little bit more interest. And I actually used an image from the large 6x8 birthday stamp set that's included in the kit I showed you earlier. This has images that you can build together to create a layered cake or a piece of cake along with some candles and a banner uh, image that you can use to create a background. One of the things I like about Gina's kits is that there are usually two very different stamp sets included so you can create a huge variety of cards. Well, I took that little dotted image from the set and I'm stamping with Versamark ink around my butterfly. Now, if you wanted to, you could create a mask for the butterfly, then stamp over it with a background stamp. But using small images like this one that we often overlook in a stamp set is a great way to build a background around other images. So I continued to clear heat emboss that little dotted image to cover all of the area around the butterfly. Then it is time to apply metallic rub-ons over it. This time I decided to do kind of a patchy look of different colors and I was in, I was also sure to include some blue metallic because we're using a blue background. Now you could use other colors you could put like a burgundy or green in here if you wanted to but I stuck mostly to the blues the bronze and the silvers for this. Again, you can see I am not blending carefully. I, it looks like a hot mess, but generally, as we've learned with card making, most techniques that start out looking like a hot mess give the best results in the end. So I covered the entire background. Once I'm done, I use my paper towel to buff off the excess and really blend them together. And you can see how we were able to quickly create a metallic sheen around all of those heat embossed images. Now I did decide I wanted a little bit more gold in there, so I just added more. You can add whatever colors you want to it. So I really wanted to share about these metallic rub-ons in case many of you had them in your stash from long ago. It is a product that will last you a long time and it creates beautiful different looks for whatever stamp images you have. And again, I'll be showing you other techniques for these in the future too. Now this piece had a little bit of warping to it, so I cut a piece of double-sided adhesive from Altenew to be a little bit smaller than our background, put that on our background, and then added it to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card. By using double-sided adhesive, it helps to remove that warping. Now to finish this card super quick and fast, this is the Gina K Designs Forever die set. It has the word forever and the shadow die included, which I'm always a big fan of. I cut forever from gold cardstock and then the shadow from white and added it right over the butterfly. I wanted to pull to that focal point of the butterfly. And so it does cover up some of the butterfly, but you can definitely still see it. I also added a gold heat embossed thankful sentiment underneath that and added some Trinity Stamps gold satin baubles, which really matches the gold cardstock and gold embossing nicely. Here you can see that beautiful shine that we get on our cardstock, thanks to the rub-ons. Now in this example, I did not double clear heat emboss. I could have if I wanted the images to stand out even more, giving more dimension, but I opted to save the time instead. Okay, my next example shows how you can add multiple colors to a background. Again, the same technique. This time I will show you comparison between one layer of clear embossing versus two layers. So you can see the difference. I'm using an older Gina K Designs stamp set. This is the Lace Flowers. I love this one. I've used it many times in the past and I think it's one of those classic images that you can use for many things and it's great for this technique. So I'm starting out with some Gina K Plum Punch cardstock and I am clear heat embossing this image and I'll do so multiple times so I can cover the entire background. If you want to save time, you could instead use a background stamp for this, but I think it's good to take these images that you may have in your stash that you really like and give them a new life by repeatedly stamping them and using them for this technique. So I did one layer of clear embossing on all of these. I do believe you would get better results if you do two layers of clear embossing here, like we did on our first example, but I wanted to be able to give you a comparison. So I'm doing one layer for this and we'll compare it to two layers after. Now I used a plum cardstock here and this time I'm applying different colors of the metallic rub-ons on top. So I put some blues on here. I even put some uh, green in some spots. I put some burgundy, gold, silver, dark gray, 
you could use whatever colors you want. Now remember, whatever cardstock you started with will kind of show through, but that's the joy of this process. It's simple to do, and you get a beautiful result in the end no matter what. So I covered it with a bunch. You could even leave some areas without any color if you want to. Once I'm done, I just take that dry paper towel, buff off the extra, and you will end up with this beautiful uh, dimensional background with the sheen around it. Now, an important tip that I hadn't mentioned yet, but it's very important to share, and it works with a lot of different techniques. Whenever you rub any kind of ink or product over heat embossing, when you're done, reheat it. It brings back the shine to your embossed images and really makes a big difference. So after applying the rub-ons, buffing off the excess, I will heat set this, which will make the embossing shiny again. Then if you want to, you can spray it with a fixative. And look at that beautiful background. And it all started with that plum piece of cardstock. Okay, for sentiment on this, I'm using this birthday layering die set that is included in the Let's Celebrate kit I showed you at the beginning of this video. I really like the unique look of this happy birthday sentiment, and I hope she does more like this. I use the shadow to cut from white cardstock. Then I'm using the happy die to cut from that die cut. So you see me lining it up here, and I'll tape it in place and run that through my die cut machine. This will allow me to do an inlay of some purple letters for the word happy. I have the same shadow die without the letters of happy cut out and I'll glue them together. And now into each of those openings for the letters, I will pop in the plum punch colored letters. So this is a quick die cut inlay. I like that you could use the happy and birthday without the shadow. You could use the birthday by itself or the happy by itself or use them together with the shadow. It's one of those great um, product designs that gives you lots of options. I then cut the word birthday from gold cardstock and I'll glue that right on top. And the fun thing about this set is look at how the happy and birthday overlap, creating a really fun look. So that can be the focal point of this card. We don't need to add much else to it. I use my tonic aqua shimmer pen to add some sparkle to those plum punch letters just so it kind of made it stand out a bit more. So here's our completed card. It is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. You can see that beautiful sheen, the metallic sheen around that shiny heat embossed image. I did add some purple pearls to the background. I felt like that really helped to pull the sheen out even more. This happens to be my favorite background from today because we added different colors on top. We did the blue, we did the bronze, all over the plum background. So it really creates a fun look. Now I did do a matching envelope and stamped on it with the same stamp just to tie everything together. Now let's do a comparison of this one where we did one layer of heat embossing, then the metallic rub-ons over it, versus our first example where we did two layers of clear heat embossing and the metallic rub-ons over. Notice on the teal card on the right, the embossing stands out more and is really crisp looking. On the purple card on the left, the embossing doesn't stand out as much and has a little more of a texture feel to it. Both options are nice, but it does make a big difference and something to consider when doing this technique or others. Our last example is a very quick one, but I wanted to show you you can also incorporate masking with this technique. This time I'm using a really bright pink colored cardstock. I thought it would be fun to do something different and bright. So I am clear heat embossing this image that's from that same Let's Celebrate card kit from Gina K. I'm stamping it with Versamark ink once, rotating it and doing that again, then adding clear embossing to the whole piece and clear heat embossing both of the images. I did decide to only do one layer this time, but you could definitely do two and it would stand out much more. Honestly, I forgot to do a second layer, and I wish I had because I really like the domed look that you get from the double layers. Next, I have a piece of masking paper. This is Gina K Masking Magic. I've cut it to the same size as our panel, and I'm using an oval die to cut right from the center. Now, this is a mask that I could use over and over, and I can also use the oval in the center for something too. I'm placing the negative mask onto the front of our card panel. Now you could do any shape that you want here. You could do a smaller area, bigger area, totally up to you. 
Once I have the mask in place, I am generously applying the metallic rub-ons into the opening. So I'm putting as much down as I can, doing the metallic colors like gold and silver. And once I'm done, I can buff off the excess and then remove the mask. Now to finish off this card was very simple. I added it onto a white note card and then used a friend die cut for the center. The friend dies are from this Gina K Designs Master Layouts 9 die set. It has the word friend and the shadow for it, along with a lot of other great dies. I cut friend from silver cardstock and added it to a white shadow die cut. I also silver heat embossed Love and Hugs and that is from the Lace Flower stamp set that I used on my last example. And of course, I added some berry colored pearls to here and there on the background and to the center of the flowers. I really like the look of this mast area that creates a focal point in the center. And of course, I have a matching envelope where I stamp the same stamp. Okay, one more important thing before we go. I wanted to mention that Gina K Designs has this digital stamp available. It's a very low cost and all of the money from it goes to the Global Empowerment Mission, which is helping a lot over in Ukraine. All you do is you buy this, you download it, print it, and you can make as many cards as you want. Now, Gina isn't the only company doing great things for uh, the humanitarian aid over in Ukraine. I do have a list of lots of ways you can help in the crafty world, and I will put that link below also. But I didn't want to uh, go without sharing this because I really like this digital stamp. Okay, there you have it. A fun way to use an old product to get new looks. I hope this inspires you to break out some old stamps or old products and use them in new ways. If you're interested in the products or anything I talked about, always have it linked below in my YouTube description. And if you want a good laugh, I will link here at the end to a video I did many, many years ago using metallic rub-ons. So be sure to check that out if you're interested. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. We'll see you soon.